call the meeting to the order at 7.11. Um, and because we are getting a late start, I will begin with the pollinator garden and then we will go back to other things uh, as a courtesy. Um, I am Lynn. I have been on the emails. Yep. I do not pretend to be a plant necessarily knowledgeable person. Wait, can we have them introduce themselves for the record? Oh, I'm sorry. Sure, I'm Owen Wormser. I'm a landscape designer and I've been working with uh, Megan, who will introduce herself, and, and the um, Conservation Commissions. And I do design work and a bunch of volunteer work, and in this case, I'm working directly with the uh, Hampshire Conservation Commission. Your farm is named Abound? Yeah, my uh, design build company is named Abound Design. Megan, do you want to say anything to start? Oops. Uh, I'm Megan Kuczynski. I'm with the Hamden Hampshire Conservation District. And um, we are running a grant program that I administer and coordinate. And we have been really fortunate to work with Owen, who I'm not sure if you mentioned the fact that you're a published author, too. But uh, he has many, many talents and he's um, contracting um, on most of our municipal partnership um, demonstration gardens. Thank you. Okay. So I had some questions about the design and I think some of them have already been shared with you um, in terms of the locations of the planting areas as well as what is proposed to go in there. Um, and I personally like the area that's proposed for this and the building with the bench. But I have some concerns about the selection of some of the materials, especially on the north end because we are limited in, because of whatever the infrastructure drainage is that's under there and the possibility that if something went wrong things might have to get dug up which it, which has already happened it's not a, that's not a not, not, a, not, a, that's not a theoretical it's not a theoretical in that the DPW had it back to us and made us move a tree that they felt was too close to the, the intake or the, the outtake vent okay. next to the HVAC room. So we had to, you know, we called in a, a you know, landscaper to come and do that. Was it on the far side? It was, yeah, it was on the, where that is, the yeah. northeast corner. And, and along those lines, I think the idea of a tree has already been that's, mixed for, okay. that, for that corner for these reasons. Okay, that's... If I'm not mistaken, it doesn't work. Where was it? The tree was... Uh, yeah. Was this was this was a, at least a year ago, and it was at that back corner by the you know. Okay, the so the northeast. Of, all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, northeast. So I'm, I'm just saying, it's, you know, they're pretty insistent on like making sure that things are not even potentially going to Makes sense. be touching those, those structures. And that's the mechanicals over here. Yeah. 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 Yes, but the, but there is buried stuff up here, and that's you know that's the concern. Yeah. They, they also want to make sure that, that all of the you know, they're like clean out clean out drains that have. Makes to be able to access, um, so they just want to make sure that we're not covering anything over that. But I, I spoke with the DPW director in person. He came over. He looked at what at that time what the plan was in theory, which was confined to that corner, mm -hmm. and he had no problem with it as long as the plants were relatively shallow. Mm -hmm. He didn't even have a problem with some. Like, more, there's at least one clean out drain there. He didn't even have a problem with that being within the perimeter as long as it wasn't going to be like totally covered over. Okay. As long as they easily be able to locate it when they need to. That's doable. So, yeah. So that's, that's a big deal because, yeah, I mean, it has to fit in with what you've already done here. Yeah. But one of my other concerns about is about the mature size of some of the things. And because we don't have a layout, mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure where things go. Sure. But I looked up the potential sizes 
of some of the things, and it's like, oh, that's going to get crowded, I think. But I'm not very good at looking at something on paper and imagining how it really looks live and in person. I don't do that translation. Um, but I know I personally have mock orange and... It can get big. Yes. So there's a bunch of different cultivars of mock orange. And I didn't specify a cultivar, but scale is important because also this is the front facade of the building. Mm -hmm. And so for instance, in this bed where there's a few shrubs suggested in the back of the bed, really we're talking a height of four or five feet as a mature height is, is what we're talking about. And over here, um, there's a red bud in there, which when they list these small trees, like a red bud, you know, in theory, you'll see things listed up to like maybe even 25 or 30 feet, but you rarely see a red bud much more than 20 feet or so. So even a mature tree um, can be trained too, to be even less if we wanted it. But they're slow growing and really manageable in that way. So all the plants are intended to address the type of concern that you have. Because it's terrible. I mean, obviously the plants have to be low maintenance. They have to be pollinator friendly. They have to look good. They have to be something that can last a long time. But they have to fit in, you know. And so scale is, mm -hmm. is really important. Um, I don't know anything about plants, but I think, <laughs> I think it looks beautiful. My con not concern or question really yeah. comes from having just did a strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Lots of people came back and said, we really want more outdoor events. So looking at it, to me, and I just want to be clear, it mm -hmm. looks like it's still leaving a big enough lawn for yeah. outside events. I'm just double checking and making sure. Yeah, that's fair. We This has come up from the beginning and it seems really important. And I've talked to Megan about it and Patrick's mentioned it. Um, so yeah, we're that's part of why that corner isn't being proposed to be a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, and similarly, that's why this isn't really being Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah, yeah. Because I just want to double the, check. The lawn basically needs to be usable. Yeah, and it looks like there's a lot, but I just wanted to double check because we just finished our slot and like probably 15 checks were, we want more outside events, so I wanted to make sure we could do that if we wanted to. So can someone here speak to installation of all of this? How is that going to be handled? Who's going to do the planting? That, that is, well, correct me if I'm wrong, Megan, but that is a volunteer responsibility. That's, that's on our end to line that up. Or, or right. pay for it. Right, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we had talked about um, if you needed help recruiting a volunteer work group for that, um, we could assist with um, marketing of a, that opportunity. We have an email distribution list of folks ourselves who um, in the past, pre-pandemic, and are now returning to helping us with our native plant sales and things like that. So um, I, as I understand, if I recall correctly, Patrick, there's a Friends of the Library group or a garden-oriented garden, garden -oriented group at the yeah. library. There is. And, and so we, yeah. we could augment that. Mm -hmm. So. And, um, and Owen uh, will assist with, you know, really lead the way in terms of placement of which things go where. Um, he did this really nicely at a, a garden that we planted with 1,300 um, plants to put in the ground, and, you know, just placing them in the right locations so we had the right outcome when they finally all started growing together. So um, this is a much smaller scale. Um, piece and it's a very it's very prominent entry um, design so the location really matters so that he would be available um, to place and then um, also to talk to the folks who would be mainly charged with the maintenance of the space especially in the first couple of years of the gardens getting um, established uh, knowing how to maintain it well and tell the difference between um, the friends and the not friends that might be trying to creep in so um, if, if if I recall correctly, Owen, those are some of the things that we talked about for helping the library to, to get mm -hmm. their garden off the 
Yeah. Yeah, those are all key points, and really, it's just sort of general oversight so that the volunteers know what they're doing, or if they already know that they're comfortable and that we confirm that. So there are certain key pieces like like making sure that the layout is exactly correct, and so that we address all of those things in terms of the design. Um, but a lot of the devil's in the details, so there's just sort of availability for questions dropping in, even if it's just five or ten minutes here and there, to say, okay, this has been prepared well, all the weeds are out, um, we're ready for the next stage. So that kind of general oversight is, is basically part of the mix. And very importantly, the know-how on the back end of maintenance that Megan mentioned is, is part of that. Do we have somebody who like might be willing to step forward? Uh, like one of my concerns is that we don't have like a lead volunteer on this project that really could, you know, kind of represent us. Mm -hmm. Like, do we know well, sorry, anyone yeah. that sort of see that as myself? As myself, it, not as a, I'm not a gardening expert, but as a person, as the person that's going to be kind of going back and forth between all of the all of the parties. I, I guess I'm thinking it would also help to have like a lead volunteer for like. Well, unless I think, you're I think that's the true from a process. practical perspective. That if there's you and another liaison in regard to plant information specifically, like weeding and things like people being able to send emails and pictures of weeds and being like, "What's this?" Yeah. or just things that you don't have, so you don't have to like. Yeah, jump no, out absolutely. So to to that point, uh, I'm meeting with. Uh, Megan Campbell. Oh, go ahead. That's what I wondered. And <laughs> that's Aaron what I was going to Who is one of the people that's been leading over the years to the garden. Great. You know, volunteer effort. So I'm meeting with them about general, discuss general discussion about maintaining everything this summer. This will be part of that discussion. Oh, great. Um, and hopefully, you know, hopefully they'll be part of that solution because they're already taking the lead. Like they came to me and said, we want to do this. Mm -hmm. So I said, That's great. wonderful. Yeah, so I think that's probably, the, that would be the starting point for yeah. what, I think, what you're talking about. That's a so, great starting point. Yeah, so, but to that point, um, and before I forget, one of the things that in order to talk to them about enlisting volunteers, what do you think, based on what your plan is and how many plants are involved, what is the optimal number of volunteers for like, you know, the main day when we do the bulk of this yeah. work? How many people do you think is like the right, not too few, but also yeah. not too many that are tripping over each other? I think the upper number is pretty high because there's room for people just to learn and be sort of part of it as a workshop and even if they just planted two plants or something. So the upper number is pretty high. It could even be like 20, 25 people, which probably isn't going to be an issue. Um, for the lower number, it's probably more like uh, five or six people would be optimal. I mean, we could probably get away with three or four people if they were really determined and, and you know, were willing to work hard, but somewhere in that ballpark. Okay. I, I don't think there'll be a problem doing that. I mean, we, with volunteers, I probably mentioned this when we met previously, but all the stuff that's planted here, yeah. nearly everything was planted in one day. Yeah. If, remember, sorry, so that, yeah, that yeah, bodes well. Day. Yes. Because yeah, we're yeah, not yeah. doing anything that's sort of enormous. We have yeah. to take up the grass over Anything. here in that one area. Some of the soil has to be uh, spaded up mm -hmm. to loosen it. Some soil compost mix will go down planting mulch. You know, so it sounds very doable. Okay. Would you envision that being a multi-day process based on the way that works? I guess it's up to how they feel comfortable doing it because it could be either way. Okay. Yep. So whatever's most convenient. Okay. Okay. Um, What's your vision on timeline? <laughs> I think it's really just a matter of when everybody's ready from an organizational standpoint because I can jump in at any point in time and then we just have to be able to access the plants. But by mid-May, certainly by late May, early June, they start to be available. A lot of the perennials, um, sometimes the nurseries don't like to let them go until they know that they're actually going to be healthy. So it takes a little while sometimes, but certainly, um, you know, mid-May, mid-June is certainly is doable. And it's really whenever. I mean, if we just plan a little later, it's going to be a matter of someone being able to water if yeah. it gets hot and things like that, just to help the plants establish. None of these plants are going to need regular care 
once they're established, but that first season, they'll need a little bit of people just kind of keeping an eye on them. Okay. Are there faucets on the outside of the building? Other what? Faucets. There are, but I couldn't, I couldn't tell you exactly where they're located. The ones that I know about are, there, there may be one on the front. I would be surprised if there wasn't, but I just can't remember. But there are, you know, we have tons and tons of hose, so we will be able to, like, you know, hook it together. Megan, may I please may I assume that the budget that's proposed has been approved? Uh, yeah, Owen and I are coordinating on that. So okay. everything everything that's listed there is is an option. Okay, I just wanted to check. And I am wondering if a two stage process or maybe three, depending how much work it is to get the sod up. Would it be possible for you to mark the layout and then for the preparation work mm -hmm. to be done Absolutely. and then the planting? Yep. I could come by with some line paint and just mark the grass and make sure it's really clear what needs to come up and then make sure they know, you know how much uh, sort of digging they have to do if they need to loosen up the ground and then how much topsoil uh, compost needs to go in. So I can set them up with that. Okay, Did that answer your question? Yes. That, that's one of my recollections from being involved with the original planting day. A lot of the ground was very hard packed. Yeah, yeah like post construction. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. we really had to do a lot of loosening, a lot of digging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the advantage of adding the soil compost mix is it creates, it adds more life to the soil. Mm -hmm. And so with a little bit of, of breaking it up and then putting that on top, worms and things like that start to get in there, so it should help. I'm also wondering if, um, I am kind of envisioning a notebook that identifies what is planted where and has all of the little tags that sometimes come with the plants so that you've got a picture of what it looks like and yeah. what the care instructions are and that'd be great and i think that's important you know that there's so there can be continuity over time and people know what they are and also just as a general resource um, the more that people can interact with the plants and see what they are so if they're ta if it's possible to tag them that's even better but having a map or you know and so that's part of my job with volunteers is to make sure that if they have questions about certain plants um, for making that map, then I can answer them. But they can put something like that together pretty easily. So there's no, like, um, I just forgot the word I'm looking for, like placards that like describe the pollinator garden throughout it? There's one sign that is going to be near this, in this bed here, that describes that it's a demonstration garden, and Megan can probably speak to that a little bit more specifically. Sure, um, yeah, so each demonstration garden has its own uh, customized sign. Um, and we can talk about what's, you know, what scale sign makes the most sense for that garden. Um, the, the idea is that we have a QR code that is situated on that sign so that it can be a dynamic link yes. and you can change the of it if should the um, activity or, or um, plant selection in that garden ever change um, and also tied to other similar gardens around the area in, in part of this pollinator cor corridor that we're trying to create so um, so that is really I mean it does assume that most people have a smartphone and can can link to a to a QR code um, but that will allow more informational content than a sign would support tastefully. And, um, and it's more of an evergreen type approach than putting you know, the sign in that we have in mind to last at least 10 years and then what if the site changes significantly during that time? Do we then just scrap the sign and start again? Um, the idea is that by using the link we can, we can keep that content fresh and relevant and accurate. Um, are there any regulations about signs that we need to be aware of, like for the town? I'm just following in the newspaper. Great controversy about signs. Um, so for everything we did here, we passed it by the Historical Commission 
just to be super yes. safe. And I can't see why we shouldn't do that. I mean, it was, it was just a like courtesy. We didn't always have to, but we did anyway when we built and it. And I'm assuming this is going to be a relatively modest, like in somewhat room. innocuous kind of sign, not like a yeah. It's going to be kind of fit in on the, the edge of the bed, <laughs> and it's like I think it's two feet by three feet okay. is the target size. Okay. Great. Oh, that's bigger than I thought. So yeah, we probably maybe we should. They they really need a for, for signage stuff. I think they only, still, they only care about lit signs. I thought I thought that was really good. Um, we started with them. Like they might send us somewhere else, but we did it out of courtesy. Like in the past, like we always just started with them. Um, and they might say, no, you need to talk to these people, or no, that doesn't really would, matter. Would it make sense for me to start with just start with town hall just to. Yeah. Who's in charge of the historical commission? I I feel like at the time we had like. Or just in terms of signage, when someone if we're gonna, yeah. if someone proposes the sign, the planning board, board for sure is it you know there's there there someone to consider the because mm -hmm. that they're the ones dealing with the controversial much larger sign. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, we'll look into that. Right. It again. With a sign of this size, it shouldn't be that hard. You might be absolutely right. Historical commission is. It was just polite, like yeah. it's just yeah. what we did to be neighborly, right? Yeah. Like not to, mm -hmm. so that nobody sure. felt surprised or. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And do you envision planting day being on some Saturday? I would imagine probably. So what do we, we have to approve the project and then we, do we have to approve funds for it today? Like what are we approving today? I think just going ahead with the project. Mm -hmm. And I think perhaps once Patrick has the conversation with Megan and Marilyn, then we will have some ability to maybe schedule things and then we can let you know when laying out the lines mm -hmm. makes the most sense because it's not going to do any good if the DPW mows the grass off. Mm -hmm. So do you want a motion? I would be happy to accept a motion <laughs> if you would <laughs> like to make one. I would like to make a motion oh. that we move forward with the pollinator garden. Second. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? You know, thank you. Thank you, Monica. Thank you all. Thank you, Owen, for coming down. Well, I appreciate we'll be in touch. it. To be continued, yeah. yeah. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so thank much. Bye, yeah. Megan. I'm worried. Thank you very much. I will just request that it, the volunteer day not be the day after Robin's graduation. What is that? It's the last day of May. Oh. Which is, is Memorial Day weekend? Well, no, it's the weekend mm -hmm. after Memorial Day. Okay. And that's also the day of the Hadley Aspargus Fest. So oh, that, oh, that would not be a good day anyway. Good day. Good day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Traditionally, we've always no, that's right. It's always been the first graduation. One. Okay. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> this is the first year I'm paying attention to the Hopkins graduation day. So you have a vested interest. I do. Okay, back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Minutes. The March 15th. Mm -hmm. I will move acceptance of the minutes of March 18th. Is there a second? Second. Are there any comments or corrections or? Anything that needs to change? In that case, all in favor? Hold it up that beaker. Thank you very much. Director's report. Do you need to announce opportunity for public comment or not necessarily? 
Well, we do not have any public. bypass that. Patrick, your turn. Okay. Um, so, as usual, another busy, busy month. Um, the big things for me right now are that we are making the transition um, and, and working on the planning for the, what is for us a very busy season in the summer with summer reading and related activities. Um, and so, and not only that, just um, also thinking about the coming year, obviously the budget has not been, it has to be approved at town meeting, so we, you know, there's still a lot of questions about how the town is going to handle um, questions related to um, staffing, related to uh, salaries, uh, the contract negotiation with the, with the union um, that is just forming now that covers our um, benefited employees that that is still an ongoing, uh, ongoing issue. So there, there, there have been it's been kind of slow progress in having any conversations um, lately with the town administration about staffing. But one thing that um, I have been able to work out is that we, we're now going to be able to replace the position uh, or refill the position that was vacated by Otters when she left. When she, at the end for her tenure with us, she was working as a circulation assistant, um, which is essentially the same position that um, Karen Cole still holds. So she, we at one time had two of them, we're trying to get back to having two of them. Um, and so we uh, have someone that we would like to hire to fill that position. Uh, we finally got the go ahead from both the folks with the union and the um, HR department to do that. So we're, we're hoping to get some, someone into that position um, as soon as possible, as, as soon as potentially this week or next. So that is happening, but the, the issue for me is how we are going to pay for, um, pay for additional help in the next year because the, essentially the town administrator's recommendations stripped out essentially anything that was not being currently funded. So we asked for additional, basically our, our budget went up partially because, um, as you recall, um, Susan Brown, who's the assistant director, went from being not fully full-time. She was benefited, but she wasn't full-time. She went to full-time, but her part of her, there was a gap there between somewhere like 32, the gap between 32 and 37 and a half hours, that five and a half hours was being paid for using state aid funds, um, which were authorized previously by the, by the trustees for use. And so now her position is being fully funded through the town, or she's just getting 100% of her salary through the regular, the regular budget, but we don't have the money in the budget to, going forward, maintain the staff position, that second circulation assistant position. So what I'm going to request from the trustees is that we continue to rely on LIGMEG funding for supplemental staffing in two ways, one of which is to maintain the, the availability of $1,500 as in the previous, I think, two years for, for sub-staff. So if, when someone calls out or someone is going on a vacation and we know that we're going to be short, um, that we're able to call someone from our sub-roster to come in and, and fill in on a temporary basis. So I'm requesting $1,500, which is the same amount as in previous years. And I'm also asking uh, that the trustees support uh, roughly $8,250 to fund that second circulation assistant position. Now, I don't know if something, the way it's described to me, it's possible that something is going to happen at the fall town meeting once the, the uh, compensation study is finished, which is still not complete to my knowledge, and once the union, all the union stuff is finalized, that then they, they feel that they will be able to make you know, different moves and adjustments. But essentially everything is, Apparently, across all departments, is remaining static while all this is like being worked out. So that leaves us with not really a lot of options beyond you know going to these other supplemental um, pools of money that we have. So essentially, what I am hoping that you will approve is that we are allowed to use up to ten thousand dollars in FY twenty five for this supplemental um, staffing because again. 
as in most years when we're asking for an increase. It's really the least of what we need. I mean, we, we could use a lot more, believe me, but this is like the very least of what we need to just stay standing still. Um, because every day it's just, it's just crazier, crazier, busier, busier. And um, not only that, but you know, the staff themselves are doing more and more in a variety of ways, increasing programming, just the responsibilities that they're, that they're shouldering. You know, week to week is is ever increasing. Uh, people need they need support. And they need you know they need someone standing next to them, another you know another staff person, so that they're not just always feeling like they're on the on the firing line. So this is really really important for um, not only for uh, maintaining a high level of service, but also for staff morale. I have a question uh, just about the the nature of the position. If it's going to be based on state aid, which is changes over time would it be sort of set up as like a term limited position that's available for renewal um, I, would, I would say or would there be I mean I, I guess I'm just wondering about the expectations because there's always the like worst case scenario that like next year we don't get that level of funding and then we don't have that money that we can allocate for the position and then that person's out of job um, so with part-time part-time positions, the town considers them inherently temporary. Um, anything under, I think any, anyone who's not benefited is, is, I think, technically considered temporary. It's a classification that, as I understand it, that they use. Um, this this was a concern of mine, and I didn't want to, and even earlier on, I mean, I've been trying to get this, this position filled since Honor Slot, which was at the beginning, uh, very beginning of the year. Um, and this is as soon as I could get it done. But at that point, that was a concern of mine that we, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, uh, you know, hire someone into the position only to say, you know, guess what, we may not have funding. And that's partially why we're not really hiring anyone until the trustees either approve or decline to support this. If they decline to, then we're just going to have to, you know, just do what we're doing status quo because we can't not hire someone. I mean, we may hire them as a sub. But you know, temporarily a day here and a day there, but not on a regular schedule because that's not you know, fair to someone's time or commitment. So, um, having been, you know, kind of on the board as long as I have, or on and off, um, we have always gotten like make funds. We've always gotten. There, I don't think there was ever a year where we didn't. Um, we have always saved our like make funds. Right? We've always tried really hard. It isn't until recently, I think, that it's been used for staff. Certainly, when I was on the board, we didn't. Um, I tend to be a saver, right? But sometimes saving is like cutting off your nose to spite your face, right? <laughs> you have to spend a little to get a little, right? Um, and I just wonder, as we think about Lignic and how we use Lignic money, if we should also be thinking about how much of it we spend, like what percentage we spend every year and what percentage we save. Like we do need, like, I guess I'm saying I'm a reformed saver. <laughs> no, no, I see the benefit of you have to spend a little sometimes too, right? Like um, saving really helped us when we built the library. It was great that we had those funds, but we have to help. In, I certainly wonder if we should think about moving forward. Maybe not today, a, maybe today we have this. But in the in larger large scheme context. of things, like how much do we put away and how much do we spend and, and how do we want to use our late make money every year? Like maybe that's a bigger question in the future. So I'm not saying I'm against this at all. I'm saying Maybe it's time we really thought through our late make funds and, and how we use them to help and, and what percent we save. And just to put it in perspective, um, we generally, the way the disbursements and payments from the state come, they come, they're, they come in two payments. One very early in the year after we've been approved, after we go through the approval and receive our certification for the year from the Board of Library Commissioners. And then the second thing that would actually, which actually, um, I understand, was supposed to come either today or yesterday. Was so a check with the treasurer to see has that payment come in yet? And she said no, but I can see that it's scheduled to arrive either today or yesterday. Um, and so, again, to put it in perspective, our, our total 
payment from the state for this year is uh, $14,353. Yeah. So, um, and, and the, the payments have fluctuated over time, generally as a, as a result of like state budget mm -hmm. concerns. Uh, but we, whereas the bank had kind of like hit rock bottom, you know, within the last 10 years, like pr probably hit rock bottom when the, when the housing crisis hit about 10 years ago. It's been slowly kind of coming back, and now we're getting kind of back to where, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if everything stays on an even keel that we, that we would be seeing like close to $20,000 a year um, within the next couple of years. Right, and so, I'm just saying, I think we need yes. to. Yes, right, but just so, it, it, so you have yeah. a, a relative idea of like what will, uh, $10,000 is a lot, but what is that relative to, to what we get every year? I would never, I don't want, um, and then just to speak to that point, I don't want to have to, to draw from this for this purpose. Uh, I'm actually very frustrated that I have, that I, this is really the recourse to, to do. I'm glad that I have the ability to propose this, right. but I'm, I'm very frustrated just in terms of, you know, kind of going back to the town. And I feel like well, every department is sort of in this to some degree. We're not unique in this. I think everyone is frustrated, um, but we're just kind of like caught in this limbo that's been going on for way longer than it should have with, you know, the, the pay study for one thing, which has been going on for more than a year. Um, so, all things being equal, I want the town to 100% fund our, our staffing budget every year and not have to do this, but I also don't want us to be um, watching the quality of our service go yeah. because we don't have those people behind the desk to, to do this work. So can you help me out with some definitions? Because I'm learning yes. sort of library <laughs> speak as we go. So we grew up knowing about Ligmig. <laughs> yes. yes. If somebody can unpack that a little Claire bit. Claire doesn't talk about it at home from her library days. <laughs> Maybe she whispered it too quietly here. Can you just define what that is? The MBLC, the Mass Board of Library mm -hmm. Commissioners, has two streams of money that can come to town. Yeah. The first is if you meet certain minimum standards that they have set that are that track the size of the community mm -hmm. so the expectations for Boston are different than what they are for us and if you meet those minimum standards you receive a chunk of money that's the library incentive grant <clears throat> the bank Leg. part Leg. is <laughs> municipal equalization grant and I don't think we get that much from that side of things. But libraries that are net lenders in terms of ILL, interlibrary loan, sorry, tend to get paid more. Towns like Chatham and Great Barrington get extra chunks because they then have summer populations that are using the libraries and so their circ circulation balloons at those times and it is a way for the state to acknowledge and compensate for that. Did I miss anything? No, and, but I think in, in general the spirit of this is it goes back to the early days of, uh, you know, the, the board, I don't can tell you what the Board of Library Commissioners was founded, but for, I would say, more than 100 years they have been working in a conservative fashion to maintain equitable library services and resources across the state, no matter what community you are in. And all of, you know, incentive is, is you know, the, the key word in a lot of that. It's, it's to provide the incentive for communities to not walk away from their obligation, mm -hmm. as often happens in smaller towns or in towns where, you know, they have a hard, hard patch financially, and they're saying, well, look, don't fund the library. We don't need the library, we don't need blah, blah, blah. If you do that, you're walking away from um, a guaranteed payment from the from the state of something that's proportional to your population size, um, and it, it, for the way I look at it, also is that that, that payment generally tends to um, correlate because they want the state has an expectation that you're going to you know grow with inflation. So if inflation is, is happening, they don't want to see you standing still, buying less and less and less, and paying less and less staff as the cost of things goes up. So they want you to keep up with that, and essentially what happens is that. Um, that payment seems to correlate roughly with the, the rate of inflation so that, you're, that you are keeping up even if you're, you know, 
And so this is the equity fund in some ways. Yeah. But it also if you're, I mean, I believe before we had a director, I don't think we got it. I think you have to have a director. I mean, that was some of the impetus of bringing on a library director before we had one. It's like we were about to lose our fund. You know, we, we certainly weren't getting a lot of money that we could. Has there ever been a year where Hadley has not met the minimum standards? Not since I've been okay. here. I can tell no. you that yeah. Needham didn't. That Needham. Okay. I was a trustee at the other end of the state, and Needham decided it didn't need to. You can cut budgets, but they have to be proportional. You could not just cut the library budget and go and increase the school budget. Yeah. And Needham was out of compliance, and we could mm -hmm. let them come in the library and use it, but they were not allowed to check books out with a Needham library card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what happens. You get cut off. Well, you, yeah, your reciprocal are. So if you want to go to, to Amherst or Northampton, that, that gets severed. You're, you're no longer able to borrow. Uh, well, you're only able to borrow from your own institution if you're, well, if you're no longer part of this. That's why, that's why when we were championing for championing for a new library and folks in the audience said things like, well, we could just use a different town's library and not have a library. I was like, we, we actually no, can't. No, 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 no. What would be the impetus for a town to have a library if they could just go elsewhere and go to the library? So it kind of evens right. that. And I think that's, that was entirely what the, the Board of Library Commissioners was trying to, to circumvent with the system of certification. Um, yeah. It's extremely helpful when you sort of reveal the history. Yeah. Yeah. behind this and I think I can understand a lot of citizens not knowing mm -hmm. they well, might I, need to know. I would say that this actually is something that came up and so this is like a big part of every time I uh, present the budget to the finance committee which probably we didn't present a budget to finance this year I don't know what it's up about but um, but that is something that we have to remind them that there are that there's a formula behind how much we need to fund you know relative to the total budget for things like materials how many hours that we need to be open a week, how many nights we have to be open a week to maintain that certification. We have to meet all of these different um, requirements. Um, and at one point, I made the fatal error of saying that if we don't do such and such a thing, we would have to file for a waiver, which might or might not be accepted. We'd have to give a, you know, a good explanation for why we were doing that. Um, and the finance committee kind of ran with that and then basically just wanted to cut our book budget, our materials budget, like something you know, drastically in half. Um, and they said, don't worry, you can file for a waiver. And I said, no, 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 that's not, <laughs> that's not what I said. I can exactly file for a waiver, I'm probably not going to get it. <laughs> yes, right. Jim, I'd like to make a motion, given Patrick's recommendation, that we um, move, I move to request the use of up to $10,000 for LINGMIC funds for the reasons Patrick mentioned in the Is this pa point of clarification, Patrick? Yep. Are you using some of some of this money in the current fiscal year or is this just so you're all set for the current fiscal year? There's there's enough uh, there's enough of a surplus for the current year based on the unexpected resignations of, of both Luna and Audris. And the period of time okay. between filling those, that, that there's there's money left. So this is just for FY25. Yeah, we're good. Okay, I'm just for the next few This is just to have a firm plan in place for the you know, the entirety of the fiscal year if it comes to that. That's okay. I second. Is there any further discussion? All so the, the motion is uh, moved to request up to ten thousand dollars of league funds to fund a part time position for the fiscal year. I think we can blew right from the report. It says, uh, request the use of up to $10,000 from Lake Make to do the following. One, like me, like if you, yeah, yeah. you could just yeah. cut and paste yeah. right from that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maintain, yeah. So that's what I'm proposing. Exactly as Patrick has it written. And I second it. But it, now you need the vote. Now I need the vote. All in favor, thank you. The other thing that uh, I this is this was sort of like breaking, and I did not 
have all of the information that I needed um, at the time that I sent the report out, as late as that was. Um, but we, as I mentioned, we are working on the programming for the summer reading season. And one of the things that I have requested of the children's staff, specifically, um, is, and we tried to do this last year, and it just wasn't, we didn't have the bandwidth, and, um, there was too much, too much flux and too much, um, just too much chaos last, last year with, with staffing and everything else. But what I have uh, sort of tasked the, the youth staff, youth services staff, Emily and, um, and Julia, to work on this year was to come up with programming that I felt would be, um, that it would be appropriate to fund using Charlotte Smith, uh, the Charlotte Smith Fund. Mm -hmm. And because that's something we've talked about for a long time and we really haven't, you know, had anything to, to really fund with that. So I asked them to, you know, to, to do the investigation to figure out what was available, what we could, you know, what would work with our programming needs and, and schedule. Uh, and they came back with, uh, with a bunch of great stuff. Um, and the cost of doing, doing, those, doing those programs, it's basically, you know, like a half a dozen, half a dozen programs of different sorts from everything from um, you know, engineering uh, and mechanical type workshops. Um, and then there's actually one that I don't have the right up here, but there was, there was one that's going to be like a full on, like three day sort of like camp sort of thing that we've done, we, like we did in the past with like the robotics, mm -hmm. um, the robotics camp. That was, that was a number of years ago at this point. But um, so the total amount, when we put all of that together as well as, and again, uh, in order to really do this, we are probably going to need more hours from uh, Emily, who's only here at this point, between 13 and 15 hours a week. Um, so we want to be able to ask her to come in for additional hours to, to cover some of this programming because it's not all going to fit on just like the two, two days that she's generally here. So the total that I would like to request that the trustees authorize for this enterprise of running all of the programs that have been um, suggested and 20 additional hours through the summer for Emily to come in and supplement the children's you know, staffing would be, um, I'm going to ask $4,200 $4, of Charlotte Smith money to come from Community Foundation of Western Mass. So you're asking for 2400 additional because we approved 2000 last time. Yes. And so essentially, I put that into the, I put that into the, um, into the report last month. And of course, I wasn't really here to speak to it, and I, they haven't really fully finished their investigation of what, what was available. Well, I'm just clarifying. Yeah, because we, did, we approved the 2000. Yes. yes. And so, yes. So, for uh, expanded programs not, not and staffing. Not, but the, to get to a total of $4,200, so $2,200 additional to the 2000s already in order okay. to do this. I will just ask the question is it appropriate? to pay staff from that funding source, do you think? I mean, the answer might be just a straightforward yes. I'm just. I, I don't see a problem with it, especially because the, the, the hours that we're looking to fund here are specifically to that. administer and, and coordinate these programs so that, you know, sewer, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. So roughly how much do you have in total in the Charlotte Smith fund? More than 300,000. Okay. It's on the, it's on the report list. All right. It is actually more than that. 440,000. Cool. Okay. No, perfectly reasonable question. Well, I'm just wondering about how you market this summer program to make different people in the Valley aware. Well, first of all, most of the programs will have a limited, you know, they're not going to be, you know, they will fill up quickly. We yeah. will, you know, we will mostly use our in-house marketing. I don't think we're probably going to have to go outside of that because otherwise we're just going to have people calling us for a program that's already filled. Yeah. Um, so we, we market through the schools at, at the end of the school year. We go into the schools and, um, and, you know, talk about what we have happening in the summer. And, 
usually after that we start getting and we set out the usual calendars and we'll make like a you know like a pamphlet with descriptions of all of the of all of the programs and then you know parents just do the rest of the work they're telling us to sign up and they usually do fill up very quickly so I'm not concerned about that. So I make a motion to approve the allocation of up to twenty two hundred additional dollars from the Charlotte B. Smith Fund for expenses associated with the summer program. Second it. Is there any further discussion or comments or concerns? All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Patrick? Yes, no, 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 Some came back. Uh, yes, we have some used one. You we can send them away. Yes. I have, yes. Yeah, because I'm sending a yes. bunch away. They're already coming back to us. Yeah, they're coming back and yes. somebody was in contact with the suit. They're what? To uh, South America? No, there's somebody that's collecting them and sending them to South America. I guess they haven't been collecting them for a year. Yeah. Yes, they're usually good for about three years. Okay. I don't know what happens on the fourth year. <laughs> <laughs> I <think> you don't want to know. But my glasses were great yesterday. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, as I had a question. I lost it. I'm sorry. Um, oh, when you said there were 29 programs last month in your report with 400 and something folks attending them, when you count programs, and I'm just thinking this because I'm thinking about them, do you count like, um, like, Say a children's group meets every week and four times a month. Do you count that as four times or one time? Sorry, say the example. Say something happens multiple times in a month. Do you it's count every, it? It's every, it's every, it's every, it's every unique meeting of that Great. group. So Thank you. Meeting, it's a weekly meeting. It's yep. four programs. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um. Electrical vehicle, electric vehicle charging station. Jack was at the meeting. I watched it on the video before I came here this evening. My takeaway was number one, thank you, Molly, for asking if the library had had any part or consultation in this. Mm -hmm. Have you heard anything yet from Town Hall? Um, I have a second um, point, and it is that when we drew up our original plan, that spot was in there and accounted for when the parking spots were all kind of counted and assessed for the for this building. So I guess a clarification question for the planning board or select board is, we have that in an approved plan, and we even have the, the piping out for it. So I, I guess I'm a little confused. If it was counted in originally as an electric spot, why is it no longer? That, like, I think that's a question to ask. We can no, that's the plan. Was it, I'm sorry, uh, maybe, maybe you already said this. Was there, a, is someone floating a specific number car charging stations and therefore number of spaces to do your that? It sounded like one station for the library and mm -hmm. one station for the senior center. So of this mass of parking, yeah. you're looking at two spots. Maybe the second one of the senior center wasn't in their original plan. And maybe that's what puts it over the top. I don't know. But ours was in our original plan and counted towards I, the I, 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 parking. My, my question is, were we approved for only one or were we approved for two? Like, what was in the plan? I'm sorry, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't either, because it's just it's been too long. But. but I do know our plan was approved that way. Right. So that means we already have approval to have it. I, um, so can we dig into the history? Uh, is it already wired? I don't think it's wired. My understanding, my recollection is that okay, they, put yeah. in the, they put in the conduit so that you could run the wiring. Okay. And that's as far as they went. Because you don't, I mean, they didn't do the wiring because you don't know specifically what hardware you're mm -hmm. installing. 
Yeah, and, and whether it was from today's Gazette article that ran about what was discussed in town at um, select board meeting last week or uh, from the discussion, it, it was really interesting to see the back and forth. It seems like a wonderful deal yeah. on the surface. $35,000 worth of car charging stations, you know, the two that they would mostly pay for. There is an expectation that there'd be a $500 software and maintenance fee. So somehow that would have to be funded. But I was really surprised at the pushback on it. Yeah. Surprised and more than a little confused. Um, I think in some ways it's a great marketing thing to say welcome to have the library if you need a charging station, you can pay for it or use it. I'm sorry if I missed it in the details. Is it the slow charger or the fast It's the two. Charger? It's the two. Oh, yeah. But it's not the one or the three. Okay. It's the what two. Is that? I don't know. Mid-level. So it's not the fastest, okay. not the slowest. It's in between. That's, my, under that's my understanding. But we didn't really spend, they didn't really spend a lot of time discussing what kind of charger it would be. It's really, I would think it would be expensive to the library from an electric standpoint to have the, the fast one. Mm -hmm. Probably. Yeah, that's the. But are you, are you not, I thought, so I'm sorry, I'm, I'm woefully um, not, I don't own an electric car, so I don't use the, the stations, but how do they normally work? So some of them are, I, I have an electric car for a week. Yeah. Well, Mary thought about it having one and many of the free stations that you see around charge slow very very slowly okay. like i'm talking you need to leave your car on there for like a good eight hours yeah. to get so charged. You, when you see one of the, like, the, like the tesla banks or whatever the tesla banks can't are unique to tesla you can't use them okay but just tesla. but for instance if you go to a tesla bank are they they're not free are they when you're paying for so they're free so the, my point is the slower ones tend to be Free. So you know, um, Tesla public. But I don't know anything about Tesla. Like the ones at the stop and shop. Okay. Like or the, the pride line. station. Yeah. yeah. Those are, you pay them through an app. But so oftentimes, even when you have the app, it's free. Like I've, I've gone, you go on to the app, and then they tell you, because you have to have an app to do it, and then it'll say whether it's free. Like I've got, I've got plenty of free charging. The point is it's very slow, right? So you can't get much of a charge. Like if you're in the library for an hour and it's a very slow charge, you're not going to get much of a charge. The Eversource... We have lots of people who come up folks, stay all eight hours though, so that's not a problem. <laughs> the Eversource folks have a free charge. I think it's free, the one in front of Eversource. I think I use that one for free. And um, it's a very slow charge. So the fast ones would cost a, a lot for the person who's paying for the electricity. They cost they more free. to install and it costs more to the purchaser of the electric fuel. That's, no, what I'm saying is if you were to offer it for free, like that's why they're not offered for free. Right. Because it uses so much electricity. Yeah, and in this discussion it didn't say that we or the senior center would have to offer it for free. I think there right. was always the intent of some sort of user fee. Yeah or an app, or some way that the town would get the money back. Yeah. I was oh, wow. I oh, didn't yeah. even know that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, um, that's what I understood. Yeah, and I was surprised that the town treasurer really seen, she sounded kind of against it. Mm -hmm. um, again, Hadley has about 60 people that have electric cars. Um, this wasn't necessarily just an intent for only having people to use it. You can have guests that come in with an electric car and they can plug in. Right. So that's fine. It was just really interesting. There was a, some pushback about why do we have to use sort of public land for this? I mean, is that really necessary? I, I don't know. I think we're moving in this direction of having more and more electric cars coming. Yeah. Was, was your understanding from like from Linda's comments about this, that her concern was about the cost of the infrastructure. It was actually Susan. 
Wait, Susan. Susan, what's is she well, the town collector? She's a collector. She's a collector, maybe, okay. who yes. was chiming in. Okay. Um, you know, I think there's the concern about the cost and who's paying for it. Mm -hmm. I think there's the concern about who's using it. Are they citizens of town or are they guests coming to the library? I don't know. Um, the latter point, I just don't understand. Yeah. Like, what difference does that make? It's not like if you're, you're not allowed to. Right. Hey, we have a lot of people who use the library who are. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah. Like this, yeah. is, this is fun. That's like a silly question because you're obviously, if you're in a car, you're driving somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So if you ever intended to leave the town of Hadley, yeah. you would hope that someone would you know, reciprocate. Allow, allow you to use a charger <laughs> yes. and pay for the electricity in it. You, or else you're going to be a new resident of that town. Well, you don't need an extension cord <laughs> wherever you're going. What can we do to kind of, um, I guess my question is, what can we, you having been at the meeting, um, what can we do as trustees to to make folks aware of A, our, the original plan, and B, kind of show our support of having this at our at the library, that it's part of our original plan. And there's a whole handful of things that need to happen. First okay. of all, it's making sure that we get sort of the blessing on the parking space. Mm -hmm. You know, what from, Bill, the, we get from Bill DeWire and what he was pushing board. back on. Right. Yes. That's one thing. Can this even happen here? Because so, right, but so I don't, I, I'm, with no disrespect to Bill, oh. I don't actually think it's a question. We have an approved plan with a parking spot. Still, I think the town needs an answer. So, would it be it the needs to be clarified? Right. So we need to clarify yeah. the plan and the yes, yeah. yeah. He, in Bill's defense, he said a couple of times he did not recall the specifics yeah. of the situation and whether right. or not it was the number of the parking area it's not the number of spots no it's the area it's the area that the area just met the minimum or if there was any wiggle room right. so planning board needs to confirm that then we will point out that our original plan included space that was intended to be dedicated to ev charging and ask whether they took that into consideration at the time and does that have any effect. Um, the vendor made a comment about, well, you have a number of handicap parking places that are oftentimes not fully used. And legally, you can't use them unless you have the placard. Yeah, I would assume that that's built into the. Yeah, I, I think that comment went off the rails and yeah. was lost a little bit. I guess I'm wondering, is it this, the parking spot that has the sign right here for the well, also? I, I, I don't. I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's if that what, one was intended to be the charger. What I, I recall. Yeah. yeah. What I recall because a, a couple years ago, Allison brought a company in that talked to us about building a station and I think it was supposed to be like even though the sign is down there the conduit was set up for the last spot closest to the street here yeah because the sign the signage there is not is not for this is for an electric car okay. it's for like sure. an alternate fuel, fuel whatever that yeah. means so if you're burning like biodiesel you can park there <laughs> um, we would if that were the case we would need to change that sign because that's not what it's saying but Luckily, we are currently like talking to Phil again for the first time in you know many months, so we can very easily clear all of these things up because we're also talking about lead, so we can clarify all of this and to get them to tell us you know how many spaces, where were they located, and and, and you know planning board approve this? Yes, okay, you know. So one argument for this, and I don't know if this is too circuitous, but um, maybe that would even help with the lead rating too right. if you have oh, the EV sure. station. Yeah, oh, sure. should. You maybe one would think. One would think. Yeah, I know that, that, that was part of the that was part of the whole you know the whole pitch. Mm -hmm. It seems like it will take more of a sales job than I thought. To the town. To the town. I thought this was just 
a wonderful deal where this company is coming in. This company also has a little history with the town because they changed a lot of the street lights to LED. Oh. That's my understanding. They real time or whatever. It's not real time. It's real. Yeah. Something. Yeah. So were they reliable? I mean, is there is there an issue that maybe we don't know of that that they weren't happy with that service? I didn't like, get that impression. No, no. so it doesn't they, have anything to do with that. They seemed reliable enough, okay. but it was all the issues of can it even happen? Is there a space? Um, why do I we need to bother? Yeah. What's the point? So you I, know, I, I, yeah. my, my, I'm going to make a big assumption here and, and say that I suspect the reason that the pushback is happening is not because if we had, if the library had said, we're ready for our EV charging station and we're going to do this, and, and a vendor would come in and said, we're going to do it, and this is how it's going to work, I don't think there would have been any pushback. I think probably the pushback is coming because that there's like a suspicion so. that there's a creep of this, you know, this is not what, you know, the, the, this was never intended for the senior center. This was, you know, now it's going to be two or now it's going to be four, and people just kind of try to put the genie back in the bottle. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know. You you certainly have more insight into this than I do. Um, I don't know, and I wonder too if there's a way to separate it, and it doesn't have to be one and one. You know, it seems like we have a space for it. It's been piped and plumbed. Yeah, so sort of I, I would say that, that it is great. I mean, personally, just like with the solar, the fact that this that this like we don't even pay an electric bill anymore. You know, I mean, the town we have an electric bill. But the town covers the utilities. I mean, they they have, okay. they've decided that oh, the utilities are a townwide problem. We're going to manage this from the top, so that it's not like a bunch of different departments getting different rates and everything else. And I feel like the car charging, as well as the solar, these are all big issues that the town needs to grapple with. And it is a far better thing that the town be grappling with it from the top rather than again. If we have to go alone, I say okay, well we have to go alone. But I think it's. You know, I don't want to give up on them adding to what we have a very limited bandwidth to do these things, yeah. and that's kind of like why we're yeah. sort right. of struggling. Yeah. So I don't want to turn away that help and say like, yeah, no, no, no. I think it's great that this is a town-wide thing and not just about us. And so you know, the reason I was at that meeting uh, was to hear what the town manager would say about the solar, and uh, the select board agreed to do a sort of a pre-approval to have Eversource see how it would work if we put um, solar on a landfill, for yep. example, or solar on the senior center right now. So they did approve that. Um, I don't know what the best way to follow up on this is. Um, I was really appreciative of Molly saying, what do the trustees say? Yes. yes. I didn't expect to be quoted in the paper this morning or whatever. Uh, I, yeah, I think that this building is a set for it, and I think this is a pretty wonderful opportunity for the town that we shouldn't say no to immediately. Uh, it's a way of figuring out how to make it work. Does anyone think it would be appropriate for the trustees as a board to send a letter well, to that's the what, board? Well, that's what I was saying. That's oh, like okay. what I said originally. Like, I think we need... A statement. Yeah. Right, and I think we should include the the approval of the site mm -hmm. with the parking. Yeah. They may have forgotten. Like, it's been a right. while. Like, it's, it's not like... Absolutely. Yeah. There's a pandemic between there. It, it was like, very confusing. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it was probably hard because... We weren't there with our plans. Like questions could have been answered if they had called us and we showed up with the plans and like. But we yeah. believe that we have the space. We believe that we have the, you know, the infrastructure. Infrastructure. Well, we were approved. Like right. if, if if we had had the money and not been nervous going into like about going over budget, mm -hmm. it it would have been something. there already, right? Mm -hmm. Like it would have like been a non-issue. It would have been installed. Um, but we didn't because we were concerned about the money and the cost of building, right? We wound up building in a pandemic. It was yeah, another thing that I think is not, that isn't necessarily self evident when it comes to people looking at this around you know, people around town looking at this issue. It's not necessarily self evident that um, that so the trustees say, Welcome 
that intervention from the town because I think you know not not everyone likes that kind of like bigger intervention. Well, we'll handle it. We you know stop stepping on our toes. And I think I mean I think if the trustees really do feel that this is a good development, that you know the town is taking a town wide approach to these big issues, then I think it is really important that the, that the trustees say yes and you know we want to help yeah. really join this effort. Let me get information it. from the planning board and. Yeah. Maybe Patrick can see if he can figure out which plan went to the planning board and that it actually designated a spot for EV charging and we can take a picture of that and use it as... And they also have it. Like, they... You know, I mean, but if I wouldn't, yeah. it would be easier for us to yeah, yeah, yeah. find no, it I agree. Yeah, rather yeah. than yeah. No, I agree. As we submit it. Also, do we know who the charging folks went to first? Like, did they when they made their proposal for this? How, how did this happen? Jane went to a municipal MMA municipal. Yeah. Oh, an MMA so conference. Yes. Yes. And she happened to see this gentleman there from whatever company it is that starts with R. And she knew that electric charging had been part of our plan. And so she initiated a conversation oh, with him. But forgot to talk to us. I guess so. Yeah. And so th that is. Okay. I mean, uh, I mean, she does reference the fact that she said something to Patrick at the strategic planning, but then there was well, that was the, that no was follow the, up. That was, well, no, that was the meeting where, where I said I had been not warned, but, but informed that something was likely to be taking place. She said that, that I thought she said like the next day or, or you know, or next week or something. It was the next, whatever the next meeting was. Right. Um, and so I reported that back to the trustees and said, you know, I'm out of town, but somebody should probably go to this meeting. And then, well, I, I would, and then nothing happened. It was not on that agenda. Yeah. Well, right. So yeah. uh, it was on well, the next did. agenda, right. but we were not, we were not involved. Well, right. and serendipity. You know, I happened to be there right. anyway. Yeah. And so it was yeah. good to hear. Lucky yeah. works. We, we probably would not have even known it, uh, anything about it until we opened the newspaper. We and make sure you're on like five committees. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think the request can be made that if this comes up, we'd like to be included in that any meeting yeah. Yeah. where this discussion happens. We're happy to send somebody to help out. And I'd be happy to take a turn, like if we need people to take turns. Sure. Yeah. Like, well, I don't let me get to the planning I board first yeah. and to clarify that point, and then I will, assuming that the information we believe was submitted is in fact accurate, then I think sending something to the town administrator and the board of selectmen to say that this is the way things are and the board is entirely supportive of moving forward with this please let us know how we can be helpful yeah that sounds like a great approach you know there's some other solar issues that are being talked about in town um, there's a potential for some sort of charging station up on yeah. Breckenridge Mount Warner which has on oh, the battery yeah the battery storage which has been fairly controversial. Yep. Hey, there are some people who are very pro-solar, some people who are very anti-solar. And, you know, it's interesting because I think some of these people are conflating some of these. Yeah. And there's no reason to. So, um, so yeah, yeah, so do you feel like you have enough to go on? To start, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I will distribute a draft to all of you before I send anything off on the board's behalf. So this was talked about last Wednesday. I don't know if it would be on the select board agenda again for this coming Wednesday or who knows. For next week. For Yeah, for next week. They don't post. Well, I will call yeah. Carolyn 
and ask if further discussion is anticipated next week. Okay. Thanks. Good point, thank you. Anything else on vehicle charging? Moving along. Strategic planning. Joanne, do you have anything to share? I do. I met with Allison. We we looked over all, all of the um, all of the information. We talked it through. Allison is willing to um, like. So let me back up and say that after looking through the data and checking in with Patrick and like um, coming to a decision, Allison thinks that we should put forward a community survey and it should be about programming since there were so many um, so many areas where people were like this is an opportunity for us and about hours and Allison is willing um, Allison has that database questionnaire mind she's willing to put together um, a survey for us we were thinking that we would get it done fairly quickly, have a QR code for it, have the QR code in the library, have the QR code at the May 2nd town meeting, so pe and, and also, you know, a link in a website and all that. Um, but get it out there, maybe TV5, like as, as much as we can to get as much feedback as possible. That does leave us in a position where that survey would be created before this board met again. That is the one downside to the plan. Like it's gonna happen really fast in order to get to town meeting. So my question to the trustees is, are you? No, we have a meeting in May. It's after the town meeting. Yeah. But May 2nd is the town meeting. Oh, 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 oh. okay, sorry. Well then just I know what I was like, is it yeah, yeah, yeah. no 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 I'm sorry, you're right. Then I'm just submit share it with us in advance and Okay. Okay, are you I mean I'm not a data person. Alice this is Allison's professional career. It's her right. we've seen she's been successful before. She's you know focusing on what hours were open and she's focusing on programming. Um, and uh, I'm going to put that, if that's okay with all of you, that is the plan moving forward. Can I ask, I don't know how far you got into the conversation, is it asking like open-ended questions or is it offering like... Oh wait, I doubt Allison would ask an yeah. open-ended question. But like in terms of programming, like, is it offering <laughs> categories or... She's, she, you know, she spent a lot of time talking to me about how questions are formulated. Um, and how about how you can find out multiple different data points out of the same question. And um, I'm happy to have you call her. <laughs> She'd love to talk about it. Um, it. Yeah, like, so, you know, she was talking about, like, you know, I, like, for instance, a programming question. Like, you know, do you feel there are enough book groups? And then the answers could be, like, um, I'd like to go to the book group, but I'm not available. You know, it's not when I'm available. Like, she's able to point the question so that it also leads it towards hours. And, and I, I ran a squad. I'm good at that. And I'm also willing to put expertise in her hands. So I'm sorry I don't have a better answer. But I know she's always know loves to talk about that. Yeah. And I'm happy to, you know, meet with anyone that's interested before, too. Well, I think once she has the survey content put together to okay. share it with everybody okay. so we can we have and I will share with the committee also that came together sure um so that they will know also what we're doing our next steps the mm -hmm. folks Thanks. who got together that day so if you're looking at something like ours are there certain limits or constraints is it based on staffing that would be my guess okay. If you can, if you can pay for it, you can dream it. You can do it. Well, it may also be point to differing hours, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. like yeah. we don't. Yeah, shift. that's why yeah. we leave it up to like. The data doing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's a difference between more hours and different hours. Right. Right. But also, this is about visioning, right? So yes. it may it may tell us like that yeah. this is something we want to aim aim for and advocate for but it's not something that we're promising for, you know, this summer. Next week. Okay. Anything else? Okay. The roof. 
So the roofer that the roofer that uh, that Mark recommended was actually did not respond to to my uh, to my question or my, my email um, about availability to come look. Um, in the meantime, I reached out to a company called Rivet. Rivet. I don't know. This is more of the name. I can't remember the like, initials, but I don't know. Uh, Rivet Roofing, um, who that was one of the companies that came out and looked at the roof a year or two ago and, and, um, and gave us their written assessment of, um, or gave us a written assessment answering a bunch of follow up questions. Um, that employee that did that is no longer with the company. Uh, they sent out somebody else. I have not received anything um, substantial from them yet. I did follow up with them just to say, you know, I, I know your guy was over here. Do, do you have any update for me? And they just, you know, the guy asked a couple of cursory, this is the not the guy that came out with the vice president of operations. Um, he asked a couple of cursory questions and then I have not heard back and that's been a couple of days. So I don't have, he, he, well, he did allude to the roofer having seen some, I think he referred to them as like minor repairs that needed to be done. I didn't get, I was, didn't get an answer about like, well, are these minor repairs that would prevent what happened from happening again? And were they, did he locate the source of the leak? Mm -hmm. Probably, you know, definitively or probably. Um, I just don't have any information in terms of, of that. But I'm hoping that uh, if they're gonna come back out and do the repairs, then I'll have that information shortly. I understand that the at the last meeting the trustees authorized what two, was that two thousand dollars that was authorized for mm -hmm. roof repairs. Yes. So I mean for now I guess that that will you know that'll have to do because I don't have any information to to change that number. And I did some homework this month um, we did hear from Mark who supports us getting Gale roofing, which we also received. Gale Engineering. Yeah, yeah. From the, we, seen this, we received the same support from the structural engineer I talked to. And the structural engineer I talked to, although I don't have, um, there's some details missing, but he said you have up to six years. It's a little bit confusing at this point, right, to go back and file a claim. So there's, Patrick and I talked about this because it was like different information than the one year. So, a, you know, here's a structural engineer saying you have six years to go back. Um, I would like to make a proposal that we hire Gail, that we go with the contract that Gail had proposed and we um, move forward with the bigger study. And the suggestion about Gale comes from vetting a number of different companies and, you know, you can use different rubrics and all of that, but basically um, they, they came out pretty well of everybody that was interested. Not the most money, not the least money. They have a fairly good reputation. They seem to be a good company to go with. Like, were they like the middle? As I remember, like it was a huge span, and they were not the twenty nine thousand. Yeah, I think I don't remember the exact figure, and I don't. Unfortunately, I don't have any in front of but they, I think they were twelve. Well, we could move on a vote about Gale and moving this forward, but I also do have a question for you. We've had some rainy days. I mean, last month was really quite a wet month. Yes. Um, have you had more leaks lately? What's the latest situation? We haven't had anything new since since those stains appeared. And my suspicion is that, and I may have said this to some of you previously, but I'm pretty sure it's, that it was probably the sort of thing where in a, in a driving rain, wind blowing sideways, and rain was driven up and under um, shingles. That, but the question is to me, would that have happened? Should that have happened even under those conditions? Was that exceptional? Was that just because if, it, if it's, if it's, um, if that's not exceptional and if that's just the quality of the roof, the wind blows sometimes when it's raining and that it's just going to happen in different places at different angles. If that's, you know, 
But also, could there be concern around seals around windows or things like that? That there's other. See, there, there's this is <laughs> so when I uh, when I wrote to the when I wrote to the roofer, I also cc Gary Berg uh, and said, "This is our town maintenance man. He's been up on the roof. He has pointed to specific concerns, including." Issues with the caulking around the window. Yeah. Um, he's been up there. He's seen it. He can he can talk to that. I don't know that the roof. I don't know that the roofer is going to be able to do anything about caulking around windows. Maybe that's something that they do do. I, I have no idea. Um, but they may say yeah, no, that, or they may look at it and say that's probably the source of your problem right there. I think it, I think it's kind of um, it's it's kind of a ways from where the stains were, yeah. where those windows are. So I'm not. I'm not sure what to think of that idea, and I'm actually not 100 percent sure that there actually are clear story windows above the I don't think there are. But so yeah, but that's <laughs> but I'd have to look. Right. But so my question is, you know, could water could water get in through through a gap in the caulking, but then make its way down riding a steel beam or something and then drip? I mean, is it possible that that's what's going on? Hard to hard to say. Yeah. You know? But I put I put them in touch with Gary. I hope that someone asked Gary a question and Gary chimed in to tell them what he's seen because I just I just keep asking people to go on the roof and look at it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> the Gale proposal had been eleven thousand eight hundred for the evaluation services, and the optional drone drove survey was additional thirty three hundred for a total of. $15,100 is your recommendation for the total amount or the evaluation services only? Well, if you read what the optional survey is for, it the optional $3,000, mm -hmm. it, it seems here. It's pretty, it says, it, it, it kind of worried me because it says, as the existing shingle system does not have roof safety anchors as tie-off points. I don't know a lot about roofing, but I, to get a better understanding of the overall roof system configuration and to visually review higher elements not accessibly by the ladder or the eave line, they will use a drone. So that's a typo. It's a drone. Right. No, I know that. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Um, As opposed to what? what it's, it calls for 3000 for a drove survey. Oh, okay. It's actually a drone. Yeah, all right. Um, and it will have a certified pilot on <laughs> the drone survey. I, I don't know. I'm kind of leaning towards making a motion for the whole thing. Like, just. Yeah, I, I, mean, I was going to say, if, they don't, if they're not going to go up on that on the roof, right. it's like the majority of the right. Roof. Then, you know, we're doing I wonder if they'll provide a recording of the drone survey. They're going to prepare a brief letter report in electronic format outlining of findings and opinions. The letter will be augmented with photographs and annotated drawings noting defects that were observed. And they'll provide an electronic copy of the report and they will meet with the Hadley Public Library via teleconference to present and review the letter report. Minutes will be developed and distributed by Gail to clarify next steps. Is They're going to review the original system? plans. What? Yeah, he was asking about the drone footage. There's nothing in that. No. Yeah. Yeah. Why would we? Uh, why would we want it or say just just to double check to verify what they're seeing? Yeah. Yeah. To have a benchmark for future changes. I'm looking through to see if I missed that, right? Like Well they may they may actually store that data and maybe we can ask. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But of all the agencies, they seemed reasonable and again have a good reputation based on some detective work. And the, the date of the contract they gave us was December, so I feel like we have to <laughs> act. If we're going to do, do this, I'm, I'm not saying we have to, but if we are, I think, 
they, they may no longer, you know, it's a tight timeline here. I make a motion that we authorize the expenditure of $15,100 for an evaluation and survey of the existing library roof from Gale Engineering. Can I, I just have a point. It says ownership of documents in the contract, and it says that they own the contracts, but they will retain all pertinent records relating to the services performed for a period of seven years following submission of the deliverable, during which period the records will be made available to the client at all reasonable times and for payment of costs by client. Client agrees that all reports and other deliverables furnished by Gale or other agents, which are not paid for, will be returned upon demand. So that means if we give them the drawings of construction, they'll give them back. Yes. Do you want to make a point of asking if we can get a copy, just get a hard copy, just right off the top of the joint survey, just so that we have it? Yeah. And I don't think it's uncommon not to have anchors left in the roof. I think when they finish a roofing job, they usually take off the different anchors. Mm -hmm. Now, it's my understanding that you have to have extra safety measures mm -hmm. for people going up on the roof. Oh, so the anchors don't have anything to do with the performance of the roof. They don't allow folks to get up on the roof and look at it. I, I would not have known that. Did you, did you know that? I'm I didn't not know a roofer. I was like a missing part of I'm not a roofer so. during my, enough. but my father was. Yeah. He did a lot of work with that. And I just think that, you know, they really improved some of the safety features for roofers, which that's wonderful. But I think taking the anchors off just so people won't scamper up. Probably not a bad idea. I, I didn't realize that's what the anchors did. Mm -hmm. I thought they anchored the roof. Yeah. So when I saw that, I thought, oh, that they removed the structural parts of the roof. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, right, so we didn't finish I'm the motion. Favor. Yeah. Any so further discussion? We have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Thank you. Did we clarify where the funds are coming from, though? Need to do that? Did you say? I, I specifically no, did sure. not say that. Sure? No, no, we're not sure. No, we're not sure. Yeah. Yeah, we should say where they're coming from. I agree. Then I will amend mm -hmm. the motion do that. to include that if construction funds are still available, mm -hmm. we will draw on those first. And if not, then we will use existing LIGMEG funds to cover the fifteen thousand one hundred dollar expense. Should we use? Should we use rather than doing that? Do we want to use any of the other sort of funds that we've been asked to, to draw from, like the uh, Nugent? Like the Nugent Nugent. Or yeah. To use in order of approved availability, Re remaining construction funds, Nugent gift funds, and Lake Meg state municipal funds. Nugent, what is Nugent? Nugent. It's a gift fund. The trust fund. Trust fund. I'm just agreeing. I'm waiting. Yeah. <laughs> That's the pre vote. Yeah. Okay. We vote. All in favor of the revised motion. <laughs> Susan's purple pen is up in the air. Is there any other business? In that case, it is 8.45 and we are adjourned. <laughs>